that year, the rain came down from the northeast. The woodmen had gone, and the country, once sheltered in life, was open to whatever storm might come. Oh, but that spring was long with you in a way. Oh, Chris, I believe you hardly know me. Well. You'll have me crying myself. Oh, well, I, I just can't believe it. Is it really you? Oh, it's me, all right. Oh, of course. Here, give me that coat. Uh, you must be drenched. Oh, oh well. Here, uh, here. Oh. oh, Faith, the place has hardly changed at all. Oh, Chris. You mind you used to sit at this table with your books and studies? There'll be plenty of mind this and mind that before we are finished. Hold him, mistress. Hold him there and I'll get the gun. John, this is my brother, Will. You better be speaking to him. <laughs> oh, John, I thought for a minute you were a German in that case. Oh, it's an uncle sight, Will. What is it? Ah, the French Foreign Legion. But how did you come to join that? Well, when we got to the Argentine, Molly and me learned up the Spanish. I took up, uh, we're Frenchmen there. So when I thought I'd like to see a bit of the war for myself, he got me enlisted with the French as an interpreter, seeing as I speak the three languages. Oh, you were a fool to join, Will. <laughs> Maybe. And Jan's down at Lanark, you say? Aye, that's where he's doing his training. Ach, he's either soft or daft. Or both. Joining up when he could have got himself exempted. Well, what about you then? <laughs> Ach, I'm different, Chris. Whatever made you marry the doer devil? Oh, because he was to me as Molly is to you. Ah, oh, well, we can't help it when things get that way. <coughs> what are you thinking? Oh, just of how things were when we're bairns here together. It was Guy Doer, eh? Sometimes Bonnie. Mind how we used to cuddle up at night together. Now, the last time that happened was after Guthrie near killed me up at the barn. You still haven't forgiven him? Folk who well treat their bairns deserve to be shot. I still wept at his graveside up in Conradie Kirkyard. God knows why. How's Molly? She's fine, Grant. Oh, she likes the Argentine and the life out there. But you'll come back, you and Molly, to bide in Scotland again. To Havers, who'd want to come back to this country. It's dead or dying. A damn good job. Don't say that. But made you angry? Aye, you have. It's daft to say the country's dead. It can't die. This land will outlast us all and all our wars and Argentines. Long, long after all our little vexings are dead and gone, the wind will come sailing over the Grampians, and the land will still be here. As you say, Chris. Will Guthrie's away, his leave finished yesterday. But Rob Duncan's back. Seems they put him in prison and they'll use him awful. The man's a total wreck, he can hardly stand or make his own meat. <laughs> Serves him right, the coarse progerm. you, but you don't look up to bruising it today. 
What are you doing sitting here? You should be in your bed. I'm damned if I should have. I never much a bed. They treated you badly? Bad enough. But I just laughed in their faces. And I went on hunger strike. I thought I'd just starve myself to death despite them. But the, the doctor chilled, saw me growing weaker and weaker. He said there was no point in keeping me at Never be of use to my king and country. Rob, lie down and rest for a bit. No, I was, I was just waiting for the grocer chill, but I didn't stop. Oh, he knows I'm at home. I suppose he has a nil well to pro-Germans like. Oh, Ewan, if you'd seen that state he was in. And you wept at the sight of him. I sent John Brixen over to the farm at Ochenblay, where Rob's horse and Shalty were housed. And next morning, I looked out and saw them in the field, and heard a sound Kinradi has missed for many a day. In my bosom, lest my jewel I should find. Uh, Wishfully, I look at When I listen to that singing, I dream that maybe the war will end soon. And we'll all be back in Kinradi together again. Bad news, mistress. Good and bad, John. It's from Ewan. Home on leave tonight, before leaving for France. All day it lingered there at the back of my mind. Like a black cat creeping at the back of a hedge. He was going to where the sky was troubled. And the earth shook night and day. But he would go with memories that were shining and brave. Ewan! Hi, Chris. It's me, Ewan. Wondering where you were these past two hours. Ah, uh, uh, stuff for a dram. But I'm here now. Hey. Uh, uh, uh. Here, give us a kiss. <sighs> oh well, is there any supper then? Or are you too bloody standoffish even to have that? Standoffish. Oh, you. Uh, I'm wearied. For God's sake, let a man sit down. Oh. And a blasted climb to a blasted place. Here, give us some tea. Your supper's ready. I said tea. But is that all you've got to say to me now that I've come home? Be better off spending the night with that tart in the town. Oh, you What's happened to you? God, what are you sniveling at now? You're always sniveling, am I? Uh, I'll be standoffish now if you can. You <laughs> What the devil do you think I came home for, eh? God knows why I bothered. There are plenty of women in Lanark. Aye, and I've had them when I please. I don't want to hear about them. But you're going to, lass. You're going to. It was like struggling with someone deep in a nightmare. Awful it was to think of Ewan like that. But it wasn't Ewan. 
Mayun. It was someone coarse and strange and strong, come back in his body to torment me. So that was his homecoming on leave. And the days that went by were the same as that first night foreshadowed. And in the days that followed, in place of love, hate came singing into my heart. Is the dinner ready yet? This while. Yours will be on the table in a minute, seeing you've decided to get up. God, do you grudge me a bit sleep in the mornings now? No. I'm content to bring you your breakfast in bed, but there's things about the place you should be seeing to. Now, what do you think I paid that for? I wonder myself sometimes. Good, what a glow on. Eyes like his mother, and the nature the same. If you've finished, away outside and play now. Come on. brushed your clothes for you. I thought you'd want to get out of uniform. I'm, I'm told the men get sick of wearing khaki. Would you like to wear your suit today? <laughs> Me? Dress up like a bloody country? No, I'll leave that to your friend, Rob Duncan. Please yourself. I'll need some money. You know where it's kept. What do you want it for? And what's that to you? I'm not entitled to what's my own. And maybe you think I'm still the young fool I was, contented slave away at Blawiri without so much as a dram to savour the sauce. Ah, you're a coin or so at night to wake in the blood. You and... Nothing but a wife you have dearly touch, in case you put it in the family way. Hey, Chris. Sorry, excuse me, Mr. Zambert. Get on with it. I suppose you'll be driving up to Stonehaven with Alec Much on one of your drunken sprees. What if I am? It's just that you could hardly abide the man at one time. You and... Your leaves nearly up and... You've never once looked at the parks or the stock or, or even noticed your own bairn. Aye, if he is. You and... Oh, leave me alone, woman. You'll be rid of me soon enough. He stayed for five days. And often it seemed to me that a tortured, tormented thing looked out from the eyes of the lost lad had married. But the fancy wilted and vanished. And suddenly I was calm and secure, putting you on from my heart. I was finished with him, either in loving or hating. Chris! What's the matter with you? Chris! Take your toys outside you. Chris! I'm shouting to you! Chris! When the hell are you going to bring me some breakfast? If you're in need of a breakfast, get it. You bitch. My God. You would, wouldn't you? Aye. That's a fine send-off for a man who's going to France to do his bit. Oh, but your guy well up in the catchphrases. Don't bloody well speak to me like you that. You needn't swear at me like that. It doesn't frighten me. No. You're the frightened one. You always have been. You watch your mouth. You know, I wonder, when I look at you, I wonder why I slaved and tended you and loved you and gave you the best. I've a damn little of that these past few nights. That was your own choosing. So after the first, I'm not complaining. But I gave you a body and a mind and a soul. All of them a gift to a drunken lout from the plowstill.
He went slow down the road, believing that I would cry to him at the last. He stood there, fumbling with his cigarettes and matches as I watched. Then he went on down the road. It was strange, impossibly strange. I stood staring at that point where he'd vanished. And then it was. I found no salvation at all may endure forever, or beyond the pitch that the heart may bear it. Hey, mistress, what ails you? Oh, John, I let him go from Blawiri without a kiss or a parting word. Oh, you and you and I didn't mean it. Oh, God, please make him come back. I should never have let him go like that. There, there, now. Don't let him go. Run after him, John. But the master. My Ewan. But, lassie, it, it's more than an hour since he went down the road. I heard, though, a long time ago, the whistle of his train out over the hills. Hello, Rob. I've just been out in the bar. How's Chris? Bonny as ever. Ah, he's grown up to be a fine lad. Have you heard any word from his father? Yesterday. After nearly a month. It's just a scrape and a score and a thing they call a field postcard. It was from somewhere in France and said no more than that he was well. But you'd be glad to get it anyway. How was that? If I haven't had the harvest to keep my mind occupied. I know. You've hardly been indoors from dawn till dusk. You're looking thinner than I've ever seen you, lass. The yarble has to be cut. And I'm here to help. I've no cutting a moan to do. You've the mill to run. Yeah. Uh, there'll be a little loss at the mill. But the soul's driven up in his corn cart since I came back. Uh, I've nothing to do all day, but... Flight it about in my park and look out to the road for custom that never comes. Folk change. And they might again. Maybe. But if they do, they can damn well wait. I've come to Stoop Blawiri. <laughs> So we went to the park, and we stooked it together. The best of the crop, Rob as cheery as before. But sometimes, his eyes would wander up to the hills, like a man seeking a thing he had never desired. And into the iron blue eyes, a shadow, like a dark, quiet question would creep. Strange. I'd hardly known him before. Only as the miller with the twinkling eyes. Now it seemed I'd known him always. Closely and queerly. I felt shy as I sat by his side at the supper table. And when he bedded young Ewan at night, he'd sing him to sleep for a play. It was eerie listening to him, like listening to an echo from far in the years at the mouth of a long lost glen. I never knew when or how in the days that followed, but the knowledge came to me, out of the earth itself maybe, that I was Rob's to do with as he willed, as I willed. I wanted more, and in me was a prayer to the earth and the fields that this harvest might never end, and that the two of us would tramp it forever. Well, Chris, lass, I've liked this fine. I'm away to Aberdeen to enlist the morning. I made up my mind days ago. I can't stay out of it any longer. All the world's gone daft, and I might as well go with the rest. But why, Rob? There's neither trade nor trust for me here. Or rest ever again till this war's over. 
if it ever ends at all. Oh, Rob. So, I'm given in at last, suppose they'll say. And this is Tatakris. Mind me kindly sometimes. Well, uh... Kissing for last. I knew already that he was growing remote from me. Remote to that madness that beckoned beyond the hills. <laughs> it had burned up like a windbush. And it had burned out again and was finished. I went about the blue weary biggings next day, quiet and unvexed. We were one and the same, you one and me. There's no reply. What do I do? What do I do? John, you'll have to tell me. What do I do? What is it, mistress? Oh, is the master coming home again? Well, I have to go out to France. What is it to do now? God. Geld in action. Oh, this is sore news, mistress. But what am I supposed to do? Well, will he be lying in a room somewhere? You do nothing, mistress. They couldn't have took all the widows out to France. But my Ewan, they'll show me him. Lying quiet and dead and white and bloodless. He died like a man out there. You, Ewan, died fighting. But I want to see him, John. But, mistress, he's buried already. Why didn't you tell me before? Oh, damn you! You like tormenting me! Chris, give a grip on yourself! He isn't dead! He could never have died and be killed for nothing! What's their war got to do with him? They're only tormenting me! Liars and cowards! The generals and their like down in London! I'll have the law on them! He's dead, Chris! It's a lie! It's a lie! It's a lie! Aye, he died fine. Young Ewan will grow up to be proud of his father. At least you have the consolation of knowing that he died for his king and country. King and country? <laughs> You're havering, havering. Oh, now, 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 Chris, he oh, died for nothing, for nothing, for nothing. Hurt and murdered Let and crying for Chris, me. Now, and you on, bitches sit no, there and talk about king and country. Get out. Oh, get out. Don't worry, I... Get out of the weary. She went for daft with age then. And me and Mr. Snow went running out of the house and down the brae with Chris at the door still screaming after us. So I was hearing. Well, there's not many who'll go to see her if she carries on that way. It's the speaker can rally the way she's been behaving. Poor Chris. What a way to carry on. Shouting. 
very... But I'd finished with screaming. Mornings came up, and I saw them come. Minding that morning, I sent him away. Noons with their sun and rain came over the house. And I saw the cruelty and pain of life as crimson rainbows. Nights came, soft and grey and quiet. But they brought neither terror nor hope. Behind the walls of sanity, cold and high, locked in from the lie of life, I would live. Far from the world that had murdered my man for nothing. For a madman's gibberish, heard in the night behind the hills. Major Sergeant. Aye. Just over a few days' leave. Neil comes straight here from the train. Why's that? Uh. Chris, I've come to tell you of Ewan. Ewan? Oh, Jay, Jay's not living. Uh, no. Ewan's dead. Don't vex yourself hoping for anything else. You can't hurt him more. Even this can't hurt him, though I swore to him that I would say nothing about it, but I know right well you should hear it, Chris. I'm, I'm listening, Jay. You and was shot as a coward and deserter out there in France. No. It's always best to know what truth's in a thing. Lies come creeping home to roost in funny ways, Chris Quine. You're young yet. You'd have begun to live. And I swore to myself I would tell you it all. Hi, Jay. I, it's best to know the truth. You were shot as a deserter. It was fair enough. He deserted from the front line trenches. Saw a blink of fine weather, he said. Just got up and walked back. Y you said he told you this? Aye. I was in a camp nearby and I heard just by chance. I saw Ewan's name in some papers that were posted up. I went to see him the night before the... before he was shot. But why did he do it, Ewan? I don't know, he'd never get free, man. It was the wind that came with the sun tree. I mind it blow eerie. I seemed to waken up smelling that smell. I couldn't believe it was me standing in the trench. It was just daft to be there. So I turned and got out of it. Oh, man. If only you thought. But I did. It came to me in a flash. The memory of Chris at Blawiri and the way I treated her the last time I was there. Like a devil, Jay. Mad. Mad I was. I knew I'd lost her as soon as I climbed out of the trench, but... I knew, too, that I'd be a coward if I didn't try and win her back. But you had no chance of reaching her, man. I knew that. I knew it as I tramped mile after mile. But I'd promised her that I wouldn't fail her long ago. And I thought of young Ewan. I had so much to do and so much to say. If only I could win back to Blawiri. Did you tell him this at the court-martial? No. I was wearied, Jay. Wearied and wakened at last. I haven't cared. They can take me out fine and shoot me tomorrow. I'll be glad for the rest of it. Chris lost me through my own daftness. She didn't even come to give me a kiss at goodbye, Jay. We never said goodbye. I mind the bonny head of her bent down there in the yard. As she'll never know, my dear lass, and that's best. They tell lies about people they shoot. She'll think I just died like the rest. You're not to tell her, Che. No. Go on, and try for a reprieve, but it's useless, me being only a sergeant. 
had no business to be here at all. You mind the smell of dung in the fields on an April morning, Chief? And the peewits over the rigs. <sighs> Bonnie. I was flying this night in Canradi. Chris sleeping there. And all the hoe happed in mist. I'm a new one, but you should be thinking of other things, man. Dawn's gay close. Have you seen a minister? Ah, oh, some old bit Billy came in and blared that officer creature he was. I paid him no heed. It's nothing to do with me. Let's get close. I keep thinking about Blue Erie. And the parks will need draining. The land will go to hell without the woods to shelter it. Ah, you're right there. There's some sore changes waiting for us when we get back. Hey, mind the night of the lightning, Che. When I went out and found Chris wandering the fields looking for our horses. <laughs> And that was the night I knew she liked me right well. Nothing more than that. So quick and fierce she was. Che, man, she guarded herself like, like a queen in a palace. There was nothing between her and me till the night we married. <laughs> you mind that night, Che? The singing there was. Was it Chris sang then? What was it? How could I have forgotten that? He wasn't feared or crying, Chris. He was quiet and calm. And they killed him that morning. never vex for me, or the telling of me this. It was best. It was best. You did it for me, and I'm proud and proud. For me and Blue Weary, my dear, my dear. at peace with myself, knowing that Ewan's last thoughts had been on me. On me and this land, with its springs and winters, and all the sounds and scents of it that had once been a passion of his blood and spirit. And who knows what memories of it were with the others who died in France. Maybe this place could be bought for a pound or two now. Oh, I could hardly believe my eyes when I read it had been killed in the papers. What was it he used to say? They're all the same, Scotch or German. Him such a pacifist, too. Hello, Chris. We were just talking about Long Rob. He's been killed in France. I know. Aye, the paper said he'd been killed in a retreat. Him and uh, two or three other billies. They're giving him a medal? Not that he'll get it. Oh, faith, no. But it'll be a token of respect. Oh, well, well, he died a hero. Aye, he must have been fine stock in spite of all his coarse talk about religion. There was more sweetness and sense in Rob's little finger than in all the Monroe carcasses collected since the flood. So long Rob never came back to the mill. And this ended as everything else. Everything I had ever loved and desired went out to the madness beyond the hills, 
on that old road that flung its evil white ribbon down into the dusk. And an hour before the guns grew quiet on Armistice Day, Jay Strachan was killed in the last of the fighting. He knew right well he'd never come back, Chris. He tramped the parks most of the time, muttering about the woods they'd cut, and the land would never get over it. When he said goodbye to me, it wasn't just the usual slap on the shoulder. He held me and kissed me at the station and said, be good to the bairns. They're all gone, Chris. Aye. The finest and the best. You mind them, surely. Fech, it was no sermon at all. And his son's no much better. He's ten times worse. Oh. The home's barely been here a month and he's made himself fair objectionable. The way he's helping the ploughman's union and storming on at the farmers to pay more. It's just rank sedition. But what can you expect from a minister that whistles on a Sunday and won't wear a collar that fastens up the back? Uh, likely be a poor German, eh? Oh, no, you could hardly, hardly call him that, for he was a plain soldier all through the war. He's a Bolshevik. Aye, that's it. He's a Bolshevik. One of these coarse tanks that made such a splite in Russia. They tell me a man can go home and find his wife commandeered any night and laying in a Trotsky lying where. The same could come in Karadi if Cahoon had his wife. We have to think of our wives. God knows Lenin and Trotsky would need to be fair, desperate before they go to that length. Eh? And I'll tell you something else. There's money a decent thinking out of Conradi with the war, but only one's come in, and that's the new minister. Well. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. And I have an announcement to make. As you know, I was entrusted with the funds to raise a memorial to those men of Kinradi who fell in the war. Suggestions have been made that a stone angel should be erected at the crossroads. I have decided, however, on reflection, that their memory would be more simply and lastingly served by inscribing their names on the stone circle at Blueweary Loch. Accordingly, I have had this done, and the Kinradi Memorial will be unveiled next Saturday. I shall expect a fine attendance, whatever the weather. They had to attend in ill weather, the folk that fell. For I will give you the morning star. In the sunset of an age and an epoch, we may write that for epitaph of the men who were of it. They went quiet and brave from the lands they loved, though seldom of that love might speak. It was not in them to tell in words of the earth that moved and lived and abided their life and their enduring love. With them, we may say, there died a thing older than themselves. They were the last of their kind, the last of the old Scots folk. A new generation comes up that will know them not, except as a memory in a song. They passed with the things that seemed good to them, with loves and desires that grow dim in the alien days to be. The land changes, 
There are parks, there are steadings, and a desolation where sheep are pastured. The crofter has gone. The man with a house of his own. And the land closer to his heart than the flesh of his body. Nothing is true but change. Nothing abides. And here in Kinradi, where we watch the building of those little prides and little fortunes on the ruins of the little farms, we must also give heed that these do not abide. They died for a world that is past. These men. But they did not die for this that we seem to inherit. Let us believe then that the new oppressions and the foolish greeds are no more than mists that pass. Let us believe that. Lest we shame these men. Do they cry to us even now? From the places of the sunset. The tune fair tore at your heart, leaping up the moor and echoing across the loch. I alone never shed a tear, but stood quiet, holding my boy by the hand and looking down on Blueary's fields. We had the last of the light up there, but maybe I didn't need it or heed it. You can do without the day if you've a lamp quiet lighted and kind in your heart. <laughs> 